Wow. Wow. Yeah. That that was the god shot. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Am I right? Yeah. It was okay. Oh. Okay. Okay. I mean, it's no. It's not because no, 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 no. of you know. No. 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 My burr size. No. That. That doesn't actually matter. Oh, no, okay, okay, no. cool, cool, cool. Because 64 is it's average. If anything, yeah. it's above average. For sure, for sure. So then what was it's it? It's just, I've been thinking about what the girls have been talking about. There's a, uh, I don't know how to say this. There's a new grinder that moved in. Yeah. Don't take this personally, but they, they say 83 millimeters. No. 83 millimeter burst? No. Today we're talking about the DF83. And before we get started, somebody in the comments right now write big burrs, baby, because 83 millimeter flat burrs, low retention and single dosing, it's a pretty interesting grinder. Also, it's $700. Now, that might seem like a lot of money depending on your budget, or maybe you just don't wanna spend that much money on a coffee grinder, or maybe it's not an option. Regardless, this is a very interesting grinder because at 83 millimeter burrs, We've never really seen this price range before. It's been saved for grinders that are thousands of dollars. So today what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about its design, its workflow, the specs of a grinder like this, my initial taste impressions, and then at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you my overall burst impressions of this grinder. I'm gonna wait for my full review after I've used this for a lot more time, put it through a lot more tests, and ultimately I wanna compare this to some other options in the industry. So be sure to get subscribed so you don't miss that. So the DF83 is very familiar in its design. When you look at this, it looks like a bigger version of the DF64. And that's not a bad thing as long as you don't mind that design. Some people don't like it, so it is a little polarizing. Now the design has been much improved over the DF64. This no longer has a wrap. This is fully painted aluminum. Everything just feels a lot more premium, heavy. Tolerances are a little tighter on this grinder, much like the DF64. P and E, which I just covered in a video. Click up here to watch that so you're caught up and then come back and watch this one. Now this one is, you know, very similar to a lot of things of the DF64 P and E in that it has a power button on the side here. And like the DF64 P and E, it does kind of jolt when you hit that power button. Not as much though, because this grinder is a little heavier. And for goodness sakes, who thought to put the power cord on the side of the grinder? I don't think anybody's thinking that's a good idea. This does have the bellows like the DF64. And one thing they've improved off the bat is the grind dial. Now we no longer have to try and guess where we're at on grind size. Very clearly shown on the top here on this metal dial. That's adjustable with a little screw in the back so you can change your zero point if need be. Overall, everything else is very similar. It has portafilter forks in the front. And like the DF64P, it has a little metal ring to be able to extend the dosing cup so that there's less mess. Now, working inside of the grinder, a lot has changed inside the DF83 over the DF64. Gone are the three springs that hold the grind chamber, and rather it's replaced with a wave spring washer. Now, we'll come back to that, but first let's talk about these 83 millimeter item mill burrs. Now, these aren't coated, these are steel. You can put SSP burrs in here, as well as Mauser burrs. They offer a different variety of 83 millimeter burrs, and I'm excited to talk about those in my full review, including like the ZM burrs, because there's a couple different options that really interests me. And inside the grind chamber, thankfully, tolerances are tighter as well. Like the DS64P, we have less space in there. So grinds are gonna be pushed out of the grind chamber a little more often, less retention, less need for that bellows. The only thing I've noticed here is the declumper is different than the DS64P and DF64. It has a completely different design as shown here. And that's not a bad thing, although I do notice that there are grounds getting stuck inside the grind chamber just past the declumper like the DS64P but I do notice that they're slightly more than that grinder. So something to be aware of, but if you're changing grind methods like espresso to filter, you may want to consider purging coffee, especially if you're changing coffees, maybe not. But it's about 0.1 to 0.2 grams of retention, which is still very low. And one big thing before we move on to workflow, adding this grind dial back to the body of the grinder is no longer a hassle. You don't have to push it down and find the threads. You just screw it on and it finds the threads easily. It works. Now, when it comes to the workflow of the DF83, I found it very similar to the DF64. Everything works as it should. You put the coffee into the grind chamber. You turn the grinder on. You bellows. Now you probably notice there that there's a lot less static on this grinder than 
past iterations. It is much improved over the original DF64, and I think that new declumper style and design is a big reason for that. I have noticed that if you're not bellowing early enough, it can start to regrind coffee. Bellowing earlier than later is probably a good practice for this grinder. This might be an issue with the declumper. It could just be the burrs. At this point, it's too early for me to say, but I'll have more thoughts on that in my full review. Now, the DF83 is very similar in volume to the DF64 for their motor. Uh, but when grinding, Now let's quickly talk about some specs. This is a 550 watt motor and it spins at 1400 RPM. To me, that does seem a little fast. Again, I think it's too early for me to share my thoughts on how that's affecting grind quality. So thoughts on that to come. But I know why you're here. You wanna know, Kyle, how does it taste? Are 83 millimeter burrs better than 64 millimeter burrs? Let's talk about this. Let's talk about my impressions so far on this burr. But first, a quick ad from today's sponsor, which is Standard Magazine. Now, if you're a fan of coffee, you like drinking coffee, like the culture, learning about it, maybe you love specialty coffee, you gotta check out Standard Magazine. This is a specialty coffee magazine that has incredibly well-written articles with beautiful art. Right now, I'm reading an article about Thailand and the production of coffee from this incredible country. Now, look at this. These articles are not only well-written, but they're beautiful. Beautiful. It's just such a nice quality magazine with incredible papers and beautiful pictures to accompany the well-written text. Standard's also an incredible resource that comes with coffee every single issue and coffee from all around the world. Now I'm from Canada and this coffee was roasted in France. Just an experience I would normally not be able to get. This one right here is a beautifully decaf processed coffee, which is not something we normally see with Standard, but this is very exciting because, hey, sometimes I wanna read a magazine late at night too, right? That's something that we do. So if you haven't yet checked them out, I got you covered. If you use the link down below or go to standardmag.com forward slash Kyle, you'll get free international shipping as well as you'll get coffee with every single order. Go start reading, start learning, and thank you Standard so much for sponsoring this video. Now the cups that the DF83 produced were very interesting and surprising to me. I expected this to have a high clarity and a much more modern style of espresso. The DF83 is a very traditional style burr. It produces good textured shots that have good clarity. So out of the box, this is not gonna be a modern style espresso. You're gonna need to get something like maybe the SSPs, which I haven't tried yet, so hold for thoughts on those, or maybe a Mazer burr. But if you're interested in thick, gooey textured shots, you like chocolates, you like caramels, you like sweets in your coffee, uh, this this is definitely the burr that you're gonna to wanna to get. I wouldn't say that out of the box, this burr is leaps and bounds better than the 64 millimeter. But for some people who want to explore this whole new world of 83 millimeter burrs and the future world of 83 millimeter burrs, because I know SSP is already working on a multi-purpose burr for this grinder, at least that's what I've been told. If that's the case, this is future proofing in a sense. Now to be fair, the DF83's alignment out of box was disappointing to say the least. I thought this grinder would have tight tolerances on alignment like it has the rest of the grinder and my alignment was fairly off. So if you want the best results, this grinder is gonna require an alignment, at least from my experience. Now I did try doing something like a turbo shot, something more modern in espresso styles, and it was capable, but I did find extractions were lower than I would desire, and I couldn't really go any finer, otherwise the fines produced by this grinder would really slow down that turbo, and I couldn't get those high extractions that I would want to yield from modern style espresso. It is capable of filter coffee, and in my testing, it produced a good clean cup of coffee. This is still a traditional style burr. It does create more fines than some people might desire for filter coffee. So I wouldn't say buying this with the stock burr is the best option for filter coffee, but if you just wanna buy a grinder and it does everything and you're not as nitpicky as maybe some enthusiasts, this burr is capable of that. So that's the DF83. And I wanna hear your thoughts. What do you think about the DF83? Is this a grinder that you're interested in? Is this a grinder you've been waiting for and you wanna know more about? Let me know everything down in the comments below. If you've watched this far, be sure to let me know down below by writing Big Burr's Baby. If you have, then you're my favorite. Speaking of which, I've gone full-time on YouTube. I've left my job and this is now my full-time gig. And so I just wanna thank all of you. It's a scary season, the economy is not great, but I truly just believe in this industry. I'm really excited to talk about coffee all the time, more often. So get ready for more videos. So get subscribed, please, for my kids. Kidding, but honestly, I appreciate all of you so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.